Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, what's well, everybody's piling in. Piling in. Hi. Hello, Haley. Haley, just chat to everybody while I set up the um, the uh, Facebook thing for me, please. Thank you. Hello, Haley. Hello, everybody. I'm just moving. Good to talk to me. <laughs> Very lonely. <laughs> Screen, screen across we've we've ended up moving offices so i'm in a totally different room i don't know where anything is how is everybody on this windy i want to know how it can possibly be after easter when did that happen i know i know i've i've now got a seven year old as well oh but hey, i'm flipping 60 before the next one yeah, we've had Easter and seventh birthday and reopening of my business. So, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and 50 million clients to book in. <laughs> Only 50 million? <laughs> I wish. <laughs> uh, right, that's hopefully Facebook Live set up with Stella, a lot of love. You're a bit loud, love. Am I loud? Everybody yeah, normally you're... moans I'm too quiet. Is that better? Yes, and you're not yes. quite so breathy, so that's <sighs> yeah, perfect. Yeah, I've got bad chest at the moment. Not that sort of a bad chest, but <laughs> you know. Hello, Tim. So you don't have to unmute because we're going to ramble on a bit, but you're, Hello. but you're on first. Thank you. And I do love the old face hair. <laughs> Thank you. It's going soon for the summer. <laughs> Where's it going? Has it got a flight? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Can we all come? This, 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 this is purely winter allotment purposes only. <laughs> <laughs> now, last time I saw you going to the allotment, you were going to uh, plant some onion sets. Oh yes, they're they're in. Uh, I should be well, round. They're they're they're, um, they're quite tall now, actually. <laughs> That's very good. Very good indeed. I'm well, seeing. Hi. Hello, Maxine. Oh, can you actually see me? And see your photo. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah. Not um, the real, well, obviously the real and you, but well, not the yeah. real live you. I need to find where I'm not doing the right thing. Oh, dear me. Oh, goodness. <laughs> <laughs> it's usually a little button that says something like a video. Oh, yeah. start, start video. video. Is there that you it? go. Mm -hmm. That'll be ah. it. Oh, you're new to this, aren't you? Uh, yes, I am Teams. to Zoom. I'm all right with the other one. What's the other one? Teams. Teams. Oh, yeah. they're all they're all got their own little quirks oh. and idiosyncrasies. Oh, he's a little more diabolical. People. I hate Teams. Oh, yeah, I don't like yeah, Teams. No, I don't Sorry. like Teams. Yeah. All my wedding training was on Teams, and if you've ever tried uh, practicing marrying people over Teams, oh, very complicated. Is that what you're doing now? Yes. Yes. <laughs> as well, well as a million and, other things. And then you can bandage them up at the uh, at the, the, the the after wedding fight. Then is that <laughs> <laughs> well? When I went for my interview, Hills, one of the questions I wasn't prepared for was dealing with conflict, oh. because one doesn't imagine very often at weddings you have to deal with conflict because you're in and out in like twenty minutes, and you know hopefully 25 minutes maybe an hour if they're having a long one but dealing with conflict but apparently that is you know the as, a, as an usher uh you know because we all play our part um is that uh sometimes things get a little bit interesting especially if you say when when you say does it does anybody yeah. have yeah yeah any objections <laughs> i've just got i whenever they say that i just think dawn french you know, Vicar Dibley is just what pops into my head, you know, when they were doing a wedding, I can't think he was getting married, and this woman's going down the aisle going, no, you can't, you've got to marry me. It was Hugo and Alice. That was it, you <laughs> see, yeah, I knew you'd know. Yeah. Hi, Debbie. Hi. Hello, Hi, Debbie. Everyone. Oh, and you've got a drink, is that water or gin? Yes, water, so it's not oh. gin. <laughs> It'd be quite a stiff gin if it was a gin. It hey, a lot of gin I it? was envious. <laughs> Very envious. <laughs> oh, that's good, 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 good. So I'm just waiting for a few more people. I'm just checking, Steph, to see if your mum's put a wheelie bin out, but I can't see, so I'll go and do it in a minute. Oh, he's gone. Gone, oh, he's back, he's back. Back, yeah. Back. 
So I was just checking to see if your mum's put a wheelie bin out. Do, do you do that for her? I do try it. to, and I put it back for her. <laughs> this is community, community. Community, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Don't always remember, <laughs> but I do try. Bad enough remembering to put my own bin out. Uh, yeah. um, <laughs> what time are you going to get me talking, Hayley? You are looking at my schedule. You're actually last. Oh, am I? Okay, I'm going to get into big trouble then because it's my daughter's birthday. Um, well, we well can... you can come in. Yeah. You can come in. You can come in before me if you like. Yeah. Um, or you can come in at. You can come in just before at the start of the business shout outs if you like. Is when do you want right? to go? Do you want to go first, Steph? Because I'm sure Tim won't mind if you have. Because we can pin you down then to five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping I, I, was, I was relying on stuff to be, you know, filling the filler in. at the end. Yeah. Filler at the end. I can do it. No, no problem at all. Let me do it at the end. That's fine. You sure? Yeah, that's fine. That's We're fine. flexible. I don't want to get into trouble with your... I have to help to... Her, uh, cook her birthday tea, that's all. Oh. So what has she chosen for her birthday tea? They're doing home-cooked home cooked pizzas. Oh. So. And which daughter is this? Georgia. Georgia. Very good. Very yeah. good indeed. Big, so we have a few birthdays around this time of year. So. Yeah. It's me soon. How exciting. Oh, yeah, it was it was Raya's birthday on Tuesday. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, it's mine on Sunday just gone. That's it. Oh yes, I wished you a happy birthday. You did. Oh, it was mine yesterday. Yeah. Oh. And yours yesterday. Oh. Was it? <laughs> it was. Yeah. And Mary but I wasn't, who's joining but I wasn't now. Seven. It's her ne hers next week. We can she's not seven. It's Probably strange not. because uh, these are the sort of first of the double lockdown birthdays, aren't they? So, yeah, raised uh, double yeah. lockdown. Yeah, I've not had one. I didn't have one last yeah. year. Am, am so I that means it? I'm still 58. <laughs> I had to think then. Mine last year was my 40th in lockdown. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. Ray is excited no matter when a birthday is, as long as it's a birthday and she gets loads of cake <laughs> and blooms. Mm. Don't make any difference to her. No, I can't <laughs> falter. I can't <laughs> falter. Yeah, good. Well, we we'll just give it a couple more minutes. Last minute, people. Nobody hey, in the hey. waiting room currently. Hello, Mary. We were just saying everybody saying they're having a birthday. I said I know you're having a birthday as well soon, aren't you? Well, we're having a wedding anniversary, so the champagne's just arriving. Oh, English champagne. Very oh. nice. I'll tell you where Mary lives. We'll all be round. <laughs> <laughs> shall i tell you what we did mary came and had a very socially distant sit on my back porch on sunday and she bought a bottle of fizz and strangely enough we drunk that very quick so i had to get the other one out the fridge in the garage as well so that bodes well doesn't it trolleyed at stella's <laughs> not had our Collingham community um, Christmas do <laughs> yeah, we, yeah we're meant to be having oh that's very nice where's mine they've got hearts on them oh, these glasses very nice very nice <laughs> they were first wedding anniversary gifts oh Aww. that's lovely so where, where is your beloved husband oh he's getting the wine He's just, I think he might be either putting the bottle back in the fridge or putting it in a jacket. Necking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've met Don. You need it here nearby, really. There he is. Yes, you now need it is, nearby. This is English. Very nice. You know that because it says so. On the English bottle. parkling. Oh, sparkling, sorry. I don't <laughs> think they do English champagne as such because it's, um, there's some EU rules. Because it's got to come from champagne. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's got to come from the region. <laughs> oh. Right, shall we crack on then? Yes. Oh, hello, Jim. Hi, Jim. Cheers. He's thinking, these are crazy women. And men. Oh, no. no it's the so crazy cute. ladies again. <laughs> are, we, are we in agreement that Tim is going first or is, yeah yeah Steph's yes. we get into trouble with Georgia no well he's disappeared so we can say what we like now 
<laughs> I know what he's going to say. If he gets desperate, I can say what you were saying, but he says it so much better. That's good. So uh, welcome to everybody. Uh, and uh, can you believe it's the uh, April Collingham Community Conversation, uh, which doesn't, oh, is Emma coming? Um, which doesn't seem two minutes since the last one. And yes, you know, we've been doing this for over a year now, uh, which is just, who would have thought this time last year uh, that we'd uh, we'd be here doing this again now? So uh, yeah, welcome to everybody and people who keep turning up and all the people who look at us on Facebook and YouTube. So uh, I, uh, I know Hayley and I and Linda, who's stuck in Newark, apologising because uh, she's got stuck, uh, all say thank you very much for your continued participation. Uh, as usual, we're starting with health and well-being, uh, but we're going to start with Collingham Parish Council and the lovely Tim, who had a birthday at the weekend. So over to you, Tim. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, so for those of you who, who don't know me, um, Tim Musson, I'm currently chair of um, Collingham Parish Council for another month. Um, and then I'll be handing over to somebody else. Um, but in lockdown, obviously, as a parish council, we've continued doing our parish council thing. Um, so and, and been keeping quite busy as a result. So I've got a, a few updates for you on what's been uh, uh, what's been happening. Um, so uh, something just to note, really, which is that the fact that the library is reopening from next week. So that's, Ooh, that's that will fabulous. be open from uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays from half past nine until uh, one o'clock. I'm just uh, putting this on the chat so people can see it. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, one second. My computer's also talking in my ear at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, um, what else have we got? Um, Norton Disney, the rendering plant, um, that has obviously come up recently again. Um, so, that, so just to let you know, the parish council have submitted objections to it, unanimous objections to the uh, to the rendering plant. There was um, uh, several reasons given, uh, um, including the. Um, uh, the landscaping and and how that will impact on um, on Collingham. Um, they've reduced the um, the chimney height, so it was thirty five meters be before, I believe. It's now twenty five, so that obviously brings with it the chance that we will get more smells drifting across. Um, we put in about traffic, so every time there's a blockage on the A forty six, they route traffic through Collingham. So we've said that we're not happy about that, um, and. <coughs> Uh, what else did we put in there? Um, I can't remember. I think they were the main ones. The Im impact on like the uh, the uh, bomber memorial and things like that went in there as well. I think and Hill Holt Wood and um, oh and uh, we also put in about um, the impact on uh, special needs schools in the area um, with you know noise and and all the rest of it and traffic along the A forty six. So uh, that was just to. Uh, uh, let you know that we'd objected so if uh, views are still being taken I believe up until the 22nd of April if you haven't submitted your uh, your views on that one um, community park we continue to uh, well we keep getting uh, um, complaints about the park and the amount of people that are there and, and the parking and things like that down Swinderby Road um, we have done everything that we are able to as a parish council. We are, the government guidelines are that parks remain open for exercise. Without stationing somebody on the gate, we have done more than what, um, uh, what we're obliged to do. So we did put hand sanitizer and things like that in there, which promptly got vandalized. Uh, we put notices up saying to people to, um, um, treat it responsibly and to sanitize and social distance and not eat food and drink and things like that in there but the bins keep being filled with food and drink wrappers um parking people are parking on on the grass down swinderby road and killing off the daffodil bulbs and things like that the we've had the um 
uh, PCSO come by, uh, by and um, run a patrol around there and, and um, he has done checks on vehicles and things like that. So we have done everything that, that we are able to do. So we just ask if there are people um, that you know that use the park that are from Collingham, if you can walk or park up around on Swindeby Road, there is the small car park um, down the side of, of the park, actually. If you come down, Swin down Snowdon Road and um, in next to the park, you can, um, there's like a little pull in just um, at the back of the houses that come onto Swindeby Road. I don't know if you know about that there, but it can take two or three cars. So any little helps in, in getting some cars off the road down Swindeby Road? Um, but you know, a lot of people do use use the park because it's an excellent facility, and they do come from surrounding villages. You know, so there's um, not much else that we can that we can do on that one. Um, we are obviously aware of, of uh, Carlton Ferry Lane and the big hole in it. Um, that um, so we're we're liaising with um, uh, Nottinghamshire County Council on that one getting them to, uh, that they're looking at it and, and working on it. And obviously um, with that as well is uh, Northcroft Lane, which is quite uh, suffering quite badly at the moment surface wise, but that will hopefully at some point all be fixed. I can't give you a, a, a timeline on that one though, unfortunately. Um, I'd like to get Northcroft Lane fixed as soon as possible because I walk down there regularly with my dog as well. Um, we are always looking for volunteers. Um, we've got a couple of things um, upcoming, such as Best Kept Village, that, that comes up in June. So any, any help with things like litter picking, with um, gardening. So we, we manage like the cross site and the pin fold. Um, um, the, anything around there that to help make that look uh, look nice we um if you get in touch with um with karen um we can sort out dates when um um when we're doing things there's also speed watch that we're always uh, looking for volunteers for to uh, you know use the speed gun and uh, around around collingham i know uh, chris allen would be uh, would be very pleased for more volunteers with with that um and then Station adoption. So I, I don't know if everyone's aware that we've um, adopted Collingham Station. We've got quite a lot going on there in terms of planters. We're um, going to have like a small allotment area down there and um, put watering in and things like that. So if there are any ideas, though, of, of what people have as to other things that we could do with the station, um, make it look nicer, direct people better to the village and anything like that. Uh, Anything, any suggestions gratefully received? And that's think, brilliant, Tim. I think that's about that's everything I've, no, I've no, got. No, no, that's great. Yeah, great. Um, I've certainly got my objection in for Norton Disney. Uh, did that the other day, and I know my mum has. And, uh, yes, it's always vexing to see. On one hand, you it's so lovely to see all those people in the uh, community park having a good time and making use of the facilities, but... Oh dear, you know. <laughs> oh dear, yeah, yeah it, it's a catch twenty two. It, it it really is, and you know the 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 parking. Uh, you know, I, I can attest it is straight opposite the end of my road. The parking has been fairly horrendous at times, but you do have to give people the 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 space to exercise, and and you know the the children need somewhere to run around and blow off steam and all the rest of it. So, um, you know, I, I just do what you can. I think. And I think it could have been an awful lot worse if we didn't have somewhere like that for the, the particularly the little ones to go safely. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but uh, yeah, maybe more could walk there. Maybe that yes. would be better. But anyway, we won't get into that. <laughs> Don, is that your hand up or are you yeah, just scratching the air? Say, it is amazing because it is an absolutely cracking park. I go over there um, doing the adult exercises frequently. Um, but I think at the moment, because of this lockdown, we're probably getting a, a lot more people, not necessarily from surrounding villages, but from the outside of Newark. I, I, um, can tell, I can tell you that when the police did a patrol down there, there was only one vehicle that wasn't from 
five miles around this area, which is what, you know, cal- counted as local travel. Oh, right. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yes, yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, Penny, you need to unmute, by the way. Oh, she's disappeared. Moved again. Have you got the one that says mute? I can't do it, sadly, but I can ask you to unmute, but I can't make you. I think that's OK. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Got a different message. Um, <laughs> just to say, you mentioned the, the, the whole down um, Carlton Ferry Lane and the yes. surface. What about down Westfield Lane? Because great chunks of that have gone. That is also on their list, I believe, for um, Nottinghamshire County Council. Um, good, good. I, um, I can't remember what was said at the last meeting on that one. I know that they are that. I'm pretty sure that that wasn't was on the list. I will check and yeah. I will. I mean, because it's you know it is bad, and of course it yes. it's getting progressively worse. Well, you know, it is. And, whole and, sway, I don't know if you've been down there recently, but whole swathes of the surface have gone. Yes, and Cottage Lane isn't great either. No, exactly. <laughs> In fact, none of them are, are they? No, they're really not. <laughs> going, um, going on the diversion where the double one, double three is closed along those back lanes is dreadful. Y- yes, yeah. yes, there, there are. Harbour in places like that. Anyway, there we are. Yeah, Thank and, you. And, if you look into that, that'd be great. Yeah, I'll I'll let uh, I'll let Stella know, but I'm I'm certain that that one was was on the list as well. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Penny. Mary, quick one. Very quick one. Something in the back of my mind is telling me that the um, the money that Nottinghamshire County Council might have given to Collingham for some of those. Um, for some repairs or something is not going to be forthcoming. We, now, we, we don't, it's actually stuck somewhere. We don't get any money not for here repairs. To talk about it. Yeah, Collingham but, doesn't get any money for, for repairs when, when Nottinghamshire is responsible for highways. So, um, yeah, we, we've, we've got nothing to do with, uh, with road repairs, unfortunately. We, we just yeah, tell them when it goes wrong. So we'll, we'll, we'll vote for you for Prime Minister, Tim, and then you can make it all right. <laughs> no, that's lovely. Thanks, Mary. And thanks, Penny. Uh, and uh, next thing we're going on to is uh, Unlock Your Mental Health, which is a support group. And we've got Colby Christopher Williams. Have I got your name in the right order there? Yes, that is correct. Because I you. read that and thought, and about I'm not the first person to do that, am I? No, it, it, it's usually Colby Christopher when I'm being told off. <laughs> <laughs> so, so thank it's... you very much. Welcome to this forum. Uh, and uh, yeah, if you just take five minutes or so to tell us all about what you do, that would be really interesting. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, firstly, thanks for Linda Dales for inviting me, of course. Um, yeah, we're, we're called Unlock Your You. We're a, a fully national mental health service um, taking a much more, let's say, communal approach. Um, so last, last November, we launched our, um, our f- a physical response unit in Leicestershire, Melton Mowbray. Um, since November, 50 lives have been saved. And there's a massive need and a massive gap that we're filling for it, of course. So we're actually in the position now to expand into local towns like Grantham and Newark. Um, further up north, Manchester, uh, Doncaster and so forth. So we're actually currently recruiting volunteers for our, um, our physical response unit in, in Newark. And, and what we're looking for is we're looking for six people to, uh, to come on and to unlock your you as volunteers. Now, we don't expect anything for nothing. Um, so in, in, in response to your time, um, we'll give you a fully accredited qualification in level, a level two, sorry, in mental health first aid. Um, we also deliver emergency first aid and safeguarding as well, just to really um, give you the ammunition, let's say, with your lived experience to help make the, the, the town a much more safer place. Um, a bit about Unlock Your You. It's been going since 2017. Um, in 2019, we launched our, um, our national 0800 free phone support line. Um, and I mentioned free phone for a good reason, and that's because we, we noticed before we launched the line, there's a lot of lines out there that are there to help people, but unfortunately they're premium numbers, um, O3s and so forth. And, and we thought if we're going to launch a mental health service and someone's suffering with financial burden, let's say, it wouldn't be very good to charge people. So we, we, we're trying to make the service as free as possible. Um, 
but yeah, we have our virtual response, the physical responses, the response units. Um, they're being built round round the uh, around the country, and then we have, of course, our our pri private counselling service. Sorry, um, which has been going since last December. Um, Tracy, she lives in Newark. She's our um, home based um, counsellor. She's fantastic as well. Um, and if I said to anyone on the call, of course, private counselling, it probably seems very expensive and, and, and unlock your use all about the difference and not the dollar. And I just said a minute ago that we are looking to make it free, but at the minute we only charge £30 per session for, for anyone that's looking for immediate service, of course. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, and a few people on the call might know of a lady called Amy Everett. Um, she's somebody that we're, uh, we're talking with heavily um, she runs a charity called HUG Hug, which is Help Us Grieve. Um, and we're looking to expand our relationship and, and, and grow together. So um, I can imagine in the next few months when these calls do take, take place, there'll be a lot more information to tell you all. And I'm excited, obviously. <laughs> yeah, you've got a nice smiley face there. So uh, that's Thank you. A good thing. Very positive. Very positive. Thank it sounds a really interesting thing. And we've had over the last year, we've had quite a few, you know, um, different speakers from the field of mental health and well-being, uh, which is what it's all about. And it's so rewarding to find out that there are people out there to help people, um, knowing yeah. where to go and who to speak to. Um, but, you know, there is somebody out there. There are um, people who will talk to you, who will provide a website, a book to read. Of course. Whatever it is that, that will suit you at that particular time. So yeah. I think you, you're doing fabulous work. And, uh, yeah, I, I put on the chat, uh, pop your details on there. But if, you, if you've got, um, I don't know, Facebook, Twit, whatever, one of those things, uh, if you can share that with us as well, uh, we certainly share it with the Collingham Village or the Village Facebook sites. Um, and I know that uh, Amy has those details, um, especially awesome. if you're looking for volunteers, because uh, I'm sure there'll be a few people might be interested. So uh... as, as, as many as possible. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank it's you. all right. Just, just then... one last thing, of course. Yes, sure. If, if, if anyone wants to see our latest events that we did for Easter, um, jump on BBC iPlayer and you'll see us on, oh, I've forgot it now, East Midlands today, make All a difference right. at yes. half six. Yes. Um, you'll get a, a quick glimpse as to what we're up to in Leicestershire. But yeah, thank you. No, that's brilliant. Thank you very much. Anybody got any questions? Anybody you want to ask anything? No, no yeah. worries if not. No, that's it. <laughs> See, now you're welcome. We're going to ramble on a bit more. We've got lots of interesting speakers tonight, uh, but you're very welcome to stay. Okay. Thank you very much. That's okay. Now, uh, last in our health and well-being, with the big, big, there you go, there's Julie. She appears like magic. <laughs> We're welcoming Julie Reed from the Collingham Medical Centre, who's going to give us her usual rundown on what's new in the world of uh, medical centres. Hi, uh, hi, everybody. Thank you for everybody who, I think most of you on the call know me, so I'm Julie Reed. I'm one of the partners at the Collingham Medical Centre and one of the directors at the pharmacy. So thank you very much for keeping inviting me back um, to give you a quick update. So if we start with the COVID vaccination programme, um, so people are starting to attend now for their second COVID vaccinations. I normally am giving people a bit of an update on the stats, but the bank holiday has delayed the March stats coming out. So I'm not in a position to give those today, um, but we'll have an update next month. Um, but please remember that when you go for your second vaccination, you still need to have your NHS number with you. And we do have the NHS number tracker still on our homepage for people to get that should they have um, misplaced that or put that to one side. But of course, having a vaccination doesn't mean that we're all out in the clear. Our best protection for all of us, because it, it still takes us all to protect us all, is good hand hygiene and good social distancing, even with your vaccinations. So I will pop, rather than go through them again, I'll pop the Nottinghamshire CCG COVID vaccination programme details in the chat. So that's your best way to keep up with the cohorts that are being released. And we're currently on the over 48s at the moment. We are seeking permission from the region to go to 47s, but that has yet to be received. So um, just so you're aware where we're at there. And there is a telephone number, which I'll also put in there. The CCG run some regular virtual briefings on COVID. The next one is Wednesday, the 14th of April, between 10 and 10.45. 
So if you're a regular attender of that, you will have already automatically received a invitation. But again, I'll cut and paste the Zoom link into the chat for people um, if they want to have a little uh, look at that and register. So I'll do that after I've finished speaking, because what I have learned from previous sessions is I cannot do both at the same time. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> I use my trap. Um, so that's where we are. And at the Collingham Medical Centre, we continue to support the roving team for their housebounds and care homes. And we have a plan during April to uh, administer the second doses to our care home residents, their staff and our housebound patients. So by the end of April and when we meet again in May, um, those vulnerable um, people in our community will have been protected. So you, any questions about the COVID vaccination programme? No, I can't see any hands going up. So oh, thank you, Julie. Right. So the next thing is the pharmacy then. So uh, you will have heard in the media about lateral flow test kits becoming available for everybody. So you can test whether you're looking after grandchildren, if you've got people in your home that go to school or anything like that. We registered at the Collingham Pharmacy uh, as an interested party to be a distribution point. That has been agreed in the last 24 hours. And today we received our first batch. Ooh. So as of tomorrow morning, they are now ready for people to collect if you would like lateral flow test kits. The kits come as seven test kits in a box. That's what you get. So that's sort of two and a half weeks. Part of your obligation um, of receiving them is that you do report on the gov.uk website because the part of this is that we're tracking asymptomatic people. The same rules apply. If you have any COVID symptoms, please do not enter any building, stay at home, get tested, remain isolated till you have a clear result. But uh, if you are clear of any symptoms, please pop into the pharmacy and collect a box and then we can get testing in the community up and running. So they're available from tomorrow to collect. Um, our team uh, at the medical centre is also starting to receive their second uh, vaccinations. So from next week, we integrate our three dispensaries back into two dispensaries. So the, the reason why that's important is that that will give us the more hands on deck in our dispensary areas and pharmacy, which will help us on our next step to queue bust and get those queues down again, because we'll have more people available and it'll mean less journeys around the building carrying meds around. So that should make our dispensing times quicker. And we are aiming to be back to two working days to have your meds ready by the week commencing the 19th. We are going to give them a five day head start in their integration to get back to two days. So that's more great news for them. Services are starting to resume back to normal. So in the call, anything about the pharmacy in terms of questions? Can I just make a, um, a test uh, statement. I, I go to the testing place at the sports centre every week, yeah. especially doing the village care driving. Um, and if I'm taking somebody to Newark, drop in, drop out, two minutes, it's done. By the time I get home, I've got the result. They are fabulous. It's quick. It's easy. You know, absolutely brilliant there. Um, and if you can get there, it's it's a really it, it's my peace of mind, not only for the people I've got in the car, but my mum as well. So uh, I can definitely recommend that. They are really, really lovely there. Yeah. Thank you, Stella. That's perfect. And so actually, that's a very good point, because I can see Jean and Michael on the call. Obviously, if any of your volunteer drivers need any lateral flow tests, encourage them to pop in for a box. That's a, a very good point there, Stella. Thank you. Um, so on to the um, Collingham Medical Centre itself. So um, looking at our call handling, we continue to handle 95% of our calls within five minutes. The peak times where it creeps up towards 10 minutes, I mean, most are done within uh, one minute, but it creeps up to about 10 minutes between 10 and 12 because of our repeat lines opening. So uh, if, if it can wait beyond those times, either before or after, that would be super for people. Uh, we're starting to introduce some more normal services and routine services. So we've been working on our survival screening list for a, a little bit now already, but we're starting during April to look through our minor operations and our ear irrigation services again. We're inviting people in already and reviewing those lists. 
it still does remain important that even though we are returning to some routine services, um, we still need to be invitation only. We're trying to manage the footfall and still the zones and still the doors to make sure that uh, we can keep everybody safe in the building. So um, whilst we're introducing these, it's not totally back to normal as we start, you know, as we talk today. The team are um, exploring ways at the moment. We've had some feedback from our patient groups, uh, well, patients as well, and suggestions that if there was an electronic patient triage type system. So we are exploring those uh, products which would attach to our website and it would give the, a bit like a telephone system, it would give the um, patient an opportunity to say, I've got a query about a medical certificate or an insurance report or a referral. And then that would make an automated message to the right team within the medical centre for them to action without the need of a phone call they would enter it online instead which will help with people's communication needs because not everybody can uh, use the phone or um, well sorry I've clicked on the wrong button there uh, NHS app so I've talked about the NHS app before I'll pop the link in there to um, for people to register it's owned and run by the NHS it's one of the few NHS apps are so it's backed by them it can run off smartphones and tablets and you can access your information your NHS information as well as services about the NHS for common patients that means you'll be able to order your meds and look at your own health information on your app and at the end of March, we had 9% of our registered patients who were currently activated that. And you just go onto your app store to, to get that. It's really easy. I will say I've been using it for, I don't know, as long as it's been there. And it is so simple. And it's got your NHS number on it for when you need it. Oh, you read my mind. So that. <laughs> <laughs> that was my next point. And all the information like that. <laughs> Uh, so then the last thing that's happened really since uh, we uh, last met in, gosh, February, no, March. No, right? no, March, yeah, March. Phew. Um, it is that we, we've all seen the announcement on the media that the flu campaign for 21-22 will now include the 50 pluses. So uh, that was a bit late in the day because we ordered all our vaccines last November for the next campaign. However... We have been able to amend that order and secure enough vaccines that we could um, vaccinate that whole cohort as well. Our first clinics will be in September. So uh, as soon as we've got some dates, we'll send them out because the sooner we get them in. And what is really positive is that we'll be able to get a thousand through in each morning. So we should be able to crack the community within the month of September for those that wish to have. We're all so good at going and sticking our arm out now. It should be easy, shouldn't it? <laughs> and so, how much how much flu did we get last year at this last winter julie do we know a proper flu flu no i don't know the answer to that question but now you've asked it i'm intrigued too so i might find out for our next because <laughs> <laughs> i don't think it was a lot but who knows yeah. <laughs> thanks very much julie that's brilliant as always as always and i i know i say it every time i come on I listen to my work colleagues and friends. Thank goodness we have Collingham Medical Centre because you've only got to read the press and find out that in some areas of the country, you know, they're crap. I'm sorry, they probably have their reasons for it, but it's not what we have. So uh, thank you from me and my mum for everything you do there at uh, the medical centre. Oh, and I see a few fingers going up as well. So thumbs. So thank you very much, everybody. Good. Thanks, Julie. So I'm passing over to Hayley now so I can uh, get let my voice take a break. That'll be that'll be the day. <laughs> Thanks, Hayley. Thanks, Stella. So I'm now um, going to do some business. So um, this is a section where we invite different businesses to come on in, in Collingham and the surrounding areas. I being one of them, um, but I also obviously do the Colling Collingham community community conversation. So our first business shout out tonight is going to be Debbie. So I personally know Debbie very, very well. <laughs> and um, she's going to chat to you a little bit about what, um, what amazing things she does. So over to you, Debbie. Hi, thanks, Hayley. Thanks for inviting me and thanks for having me, everyone. Um, so hi. <laughs> um, I'm Debbie Dawson and I, I've got a private um, practice in Eagle Village. Um, I work in as a change therapist. So 
Predominantly, I find myself working with people that are suffering with anxiety, um, depression, and have suffered trauma in their lives, um, alongside fears and phobias. So it's just people coming through wanting to deal with problematic thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Um, I use a combination of therapies. Um, I'm qualified in ones that you're probably familiar and heard of, a hypnotherapy, um, neuro-linguistic programming, which is some, uh, another one that works within the sort of subconscious mind, changing the loops that we get off, find ourselves stuck in. And another one called integral eye movement therapy, which is a rapid change therapy, which as far as I'm concerned and the other practitioners that use it, it's, it can be quite amazing in its ability to affect change with people. And the real beauty of it is that it, um, a lot of people, they go for counselling and they've got to talk about really sensitive subjects, probably quite upsetting and emotive events. Um, and the integral eye movement can actually be done content free. So we don't need, they don't need to share all the um, sensitive details of the event. So I offer these sort of bespoke uh, sessions programs put together for each individual incorporating those therapies but also I'm a Reiki master and practitioner and teacher so that's another complementary therapy and that really works alongside the change therapies in releasing all those um, sort of negative emotions that people are could possibly be struggling with so I sort of combine the two um, I also teach Reiki as well at all levels and offer some workshops. So I do an introduction to crystal healing, an introduction to seven main chakras, um, work around set, setting goals and achieving those goals. People struggle, they, they, they've, they've got their eye on something they want to achieve, but they really struggle to get there and sort of manifest it. So we do as a workshop around that. Um, so I wear a few hats really. Um, I've sort of been doing this work for 23 years, um, initially in social care and education, and then obviously recently for the last 10 years in my own private practice. Um, what really became apparent were a lot of people were coming with anxiety, um, and a, quite a number of them were self-medicating with alcohol. Um, so I trained, I've trained as a grey area drinking coach as well, and have a another element to my business called Sober You and that works with people that fall in the grey area of drinking who just maybe they maybe just want to reset and refresh they're just drinking more than they wanted to they want to take a break for 30 days or some people do come and they want to go beyond maybe to 100 days or further um, and they offer two programs there so the 30 day one and one that goes to 100 days both are done either on a one-to-one -one basis or in a group. I'd usually, I do groups of women at the moment. Um, and they're just amazing because it just gives them a lot of education. It gives them lots of tools, not only to change the way they are, their relationship is with alcohol, but also just how they're managing in life on the emotional level and, and the thought processes. So there's a big bag there that, and then there's bits that I can pull into for each client really whatever they bring to me um, and obviously with you know it's quite alarming how many people do suffer with anxiety nowadays um, and since the pandemic I have people coming that have never even experienced anxiety before and are now finding themselves suffering with it and looking for ways to to overcome that and the integral eye movement therapy is so effective in disassociating negative emotions that are linked into any memories or events. It's very quick, very, very effective. So um, yeah, that's me. <laughs> um, I don't know if there's anyone's got any questions. As far as the gray area drinking is concerned, just in case anyone's wondering, it's about people that fall the, and I don't work with anyone that's sort of de alcohol dependent. It's not, um, it doesn't replace AA, that, that's not at that end of the spectrum. It's 
very much <laughs> about people that yeah that um yeah just struggling and feel like their life could feel better with either a break or reduction in the amount of alcohol they're drinking so I, so I can personally um, definitely recommend the Integral Eye that I've, I've had with, with Debbie, as well as obviously the Reiki. So um, it, it's, it really is very effective. And yeah. I've personally suffered with, with anxiety, um, as a lot of people have, with, you know, on different levels and um, tried different things. And since sort of working with Debbie over the last two years, I think it is now, um, we've gone through lots of different things and yeah it's definitely one of the one of the best and and the other tip is definitely the journaling I don't know if anybody yeah. else journals but it's definitely something that Debbie said to me even just thinking about three positive things every day made a big big impact for me yeah just doing that daily um I've had some, uh, we had some input. Um, I, I used to be a, a trainer, been a trainer for many years. And uh, we learned to, one of my bosses went to learn about neuro-linguistic programming and yeah. came back and amazed us. And it was always one of those things I thought, oh, wow, yeah, that's amazing mm -hmm. that I think about this like this, but you think about this like another yeah, and way and how you can retrain it. Fabulous. We get, we get stuck in our loops. And we just, you know, we're stuck in them. And that's what these therapies are about. It's about being able to move you forward from that. But the integral eye movement therapy for me, so I trained in NLP when I was um, working for social services down in Brighton. So that was, oh God, it was years ago, <laughs> right, years. Um, and then I did hypnotherapy and set my established change in status, my private practice. And then for three years, I worked with hypnotherapy and NLP and clients would need six appointments definitely and since bringing in the integral eye movement they need between two to four appointments and I have people come in that that have been through um all the NHS you know the counseling CBT and I'm not disregarding those but they've been through all that process and the I in IMT is the one that gets the the result for them and it enables them to move mm -hmm. on so I, I've definitely recommended it to and my husband's had it and 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 you know people around me that you know and and I think the first thing is as well you know you can look at people I mean I'm in an industry where you know we spend a lot of the time talking to people um but sometimes it it's you know anxiety is such a huge massive area you know it doesn't mean you need to be there having some anxiety attack it can be triggered by lots of different things and it can be on lots of different scales um also as well um yeah D debbie has trained trained me in reiki so um definitely you know when you have reiki then yourself and you are actually trained in it, it does it does it it's even better yeah more effective yes yeah, yeah. definitely and it been mental health is going to be to me, you know, is part of well-being now. It's going to be, it needs to be up there with, you know, diet, exercise, mental yeah. health. Yeah, I mean, something I'm looking into, and I've got to, if anyone knows much about crowdfunding or uh, something along those lines, um, obviously I run a private pra practice and I do charge for my sessions, but I'd really, I'm, you know, in the back of my mind, something on the back burner of, I'd like to do some crowdfunding. So I've got a pot of money sat there for people that can't, wouldn't necessarily be able to access it usually. Um, um, so if anyone's got any knowledge about where to start or anything, then that would be greatly received. Yeah, well, okay. I think I can, I think I do know somebody actually that does do, there's, there's, um, does have crowdfunding. So Hills, have you got your, Hand up, I can see your hand there. Yeah, yeah, I have Debbie. I just want to say hello. Hi, hi. You. I, I'm also trained at IEMT. I don't work oh, local. Hi. I tend oh, to work hi. sort of, and also NLP. But I just yeah. want to say that I, I kind of wear a hat for um, um, Colling Village Care. Yeah. And I just thought it might be opportune for you if you're working locally, CBC have, um, will accept applications for funding if you're doing something locally uh, right. I, 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 we you know we, we can talk later you, yeah that would be great you can see Jean Davis 
uh, there. So you've got Jean and Michael that are there as well. Oh, so yeah. it could be a little pot of money. And ah. then what the criteria are if it can help people around the community. Well, yeah, that's providing fine. Providing that they are members of, um, or, you know, again, one of the criteria is you're within the catchment area of Collingham Medical Centre. So you could get some funding for that. And for anyone else who's thinking about IEMT, I was working with a lady the other day who was having flashbacks, having um, unfortunately flash, um, slit her hand accidentally with a knife. Uh, and the IEMT just cleared it completely. Without was it? Who did you train with? Coach for, for five years, like lying on a couch for five years. Yeah. Who did you train with? Um, Carl? <clears throat> no, I, uh, Joanna, oh God, I can't come. Oh, this. down. Um, Eastbourne, yeah, Harper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Joanna yeah. Harper. Yeah, I did my advanced practitioner with her as well. Oh, so. Sorry, we've, we've got to move on. We, we, we can't reminisce. <laughs> we can't reminisce. Stella's <laughs> done it. Stella's <laughs> good. I've, I've sent you a message offline. Um, yeah. Why, why don't we have a coffee online at some point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. brilliant. It's only, it's only me next anyway, Stella. So thank you very much to everyone for coming on. And uh, yeah, we'll, um, we'll, we'll sort you in hills. Okay. Out. So, so I, I think I am. I'm actually next, but I can. I can be very quick. So, <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, I don't just do Collingham Community Conversation. I do. I've got a salon in the village. It's been there for about seven years. So Haley James. So probably quite a few of you know. So it's basically just to update everybody that as from Monday we are allowed to open. Um, yes. So we are opening our doors, COVID secure as we were before. One of the main things that we've had a bit of confusion about, um, quite a few of our clients, one of our um, regulations to open in needs to be that we need all clients who have tinting, eyelash tinting, eyebrow tinting, which is basically colouring your eyebrows and your eyelashes, or eyelash extensions need to have a skin test. So this is because it can be classed as um, any change in medical um, history can be COVID related or could be because you've had, um, may have had COVID and not known, or you could have had the vaccine. So there's no evidence to show that it may cause skin sensitivity, but we just want to cover ourselves and it's, it's always good to have a skin test. So we're just asking everybody who... Um, maybe in booked in for one of those appointments, we need to do um, a skin test. So it takes a few minutes and it's it's quite simple. So I will be there on Monday doing skin tests and we will be obviously continuing to do those throughout the week. So we'll be open in full time as from Monday. We are busy, busy. Um, and yeah, we can't wait to get our doors open and we'll provide in all the treatments that we did before. And we've got a, a little bit of um, news as well. We are, I don't know if anybody has noticed on the high street, but tapas stuff has, has, has moved and I've taken over the rest of the premises on 117 high street. So the salon is extending and um, there's going to be lots of exciting things happening um, in, in the coming months. So there's going to be lots of different work and stuff going on, but I'm really excited. It's going to be, um, it's going to be, it's going to be good. So anyway, that's enough rambling on about my business. I don't normally chat about it, but it was just, um, it's quite an important week. So I think next we've, we've got community. I'm just rolling through. So I think we've got Maxine on next to, I know Maxine does an absolutely fantastic job of what she does. We had a really good chat the other week on Zoom and it's so nice to finally see you on after all this time off to Collingham Community. So off you go. You tell everyone Thanks, how Aileen. you are. <laughs> Thanks, Aileen. Thank you, Felinda, for inviting me in the first place to share some of the information with you about our service. Um, it's nice to see some familiar faces as well. It's lovely. Um, so my service is uh, called Open Door, and it is a service for people who are suffering with mem memory problems, issues. Um, we are a service that cover Ashfield and Mansfield, as well as Newark and Sherwood, and we've been in Newark and Sherwood now for about eight years. 
Um, we run a service already down in Millgate. Um, Jill very kindly offered us a place when we had to leave FlowServe. So uh, we've been at Millgate now for a few months, obviously having to close on and off because of the restrictions. Uh, but we are ready to reopen there on the 19th, but we are actually going to be coming to Collingham. Um, we have rather a lot of people from Collingham that come down to us um, to take part in the service because of their own memory issues. And uh, we thought along with some of your um, residents that it would be nice for us to offer a service. So um, thanks very much, Hilary, for highlighting that. And uh, we have been talking to Celia about coming to the uh, Youth and Community Centre um, in Collingham and opening on Thursdays. Now, there was a plan originally for us to be coming over on the 1st of April, but unfortunately, uh, we didn't have enough take up on the on the service. So we've had to waylay that a little. Um, but we are going to be opening very soon. I'm hoping for mid-May because we have had some interest. Um, it's starting to open up everywhere now, I feel. Um, over in Ashfield, I mean, we, we actually never closed over in Ashfield apart from the first part of the lockdown because we also have a befriending service as well, of which we carried on over here. And we are going to be offering that out in, in Newark as well. We already do a couple, um, but we're going to be offering that out as a bigger service. So uh, one of the things that I would like to invite everyone in Collingham uh, to come along and visit us on the 29th of April, because we are going to be having a open afternoon from 12 till 3. And um, that will be, well, obviously refreshments. We always need to have refreshments. We like cake and we'll be doing some sandwiches and stuff. Um, but we want everybody to meet the team so that uh, everybody feels comfortable with us when they, you know, if they decide to take up the service. We'd like to show you a little bit about what we actually do. So we, there will be some activities on hand. Basically, we are daycare and befriending, but the daycare takes over what mainly Open Door is. So Open Door start at 10 in the morning. Um, we're a very friendly group. We're a family group, really. It's not like going to a, a, another kind of service. We um, open our doors at 10 o'clock and the, everybody comes in and has coffee, biscuits, whatever. And then we launch into what we um we use in the morning as cognitive stimulation therapy, which is a very small part of our day, but it's something to give maintenance to cognition uh, for people who are suffering with memory issues for as long as possible. So by lunchtime, we've, uh, we've done the cognitive stimulation therapy and uh, lunch obviously happens. And then in the afternoon, it's just fun time. So we will choose lots of different activities, including actually sitting and having a chat because Obviously, with what we've just been through or what we're still going through, a lot of people have become isolated and some of our group members have even forgotten how to have a conversation, which is very sad, really, because, you know, it, talking to people and obviously listening to, to Deborah, you know, it's all about talking, isn't it? Everything, everything we do is about communication. So, um Put it in your diaries, please. We'd like to invite anybody who's interested. It doesn't have to be that you have a memory problem at all. We just want to introduce ourselves into the village and um, let you know, let everybody know what we are and what we do. Whereabouts, <laughs> Maxine? Mm -hmm. Yes. Whereabouts is that going to be held? It's going to be at the Youth and Community Centre. Yeah. And that's where we will be. We will be working from on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. That will be a regular, a regular venue for us. So it'd be every Thursday, I'm guessing that's all day then? It, it's 10 till 2.30 at the moment. It will be 10 till 3 once we lift our restrictions totally. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things we had to do was limit the time that we were together. Um, everything is is um, risk assessed to the risk assessment. <laughs> everything. We've even risk assessed the risk assessment. It, <laughs> you know, so that we know that we're, well, 99.9% .9 we can guarantee we're safe in our working mm -hmm. practices. Um, the, the hall itself have been tremendous, you know, uh, giving us all the information that they have about how they uh, are, are looking towards, you know, the treatment of the COVID inside the building, you know, how, how it's cleaned, etc. Um, all the staff uh, are checked regularly and none of us have 
we've, we've all tried really hard just to limit ourselves to our working times and, and, and not spend as much time with our families as we might have done, just to make sure that we are safe, as, as safe as we can be to provide the service. We do have a little bit of, dis well, we've obviously got to distance, which just changed some of the activities slightly, because normally we would be more of a, a together group. Um, but the hall lends itself very nicely to us being able to have to um, separate ourselves um, during activities of, of the sort that we choose. Um, obviously, we are um, uh, we are a, well, I'm a sole trader, so we do have um, we do have charges, but we keep them to an absolute minimum. They are very competitive compared with um, I know there's a Notts County Council service up in Newark. Um, so, uh, and we are specific because the service up there isn't specific. It is a, it is a combination of, uh, of different, um, different levels of uh, memory problem, as well as different, um, different kinds of um, issues, you know, so there's physical disability as well as um, mental disability, as well as, uh, you know, learning disability. So we are specific in what we do. Um, any questions? Anybody want to know anything so that I can throw anything out there that uh, that I've perhaps not, you know, covered? I mean, another fantastic, really, uh, uh, something to have in the village. I mean, also oh, yeah. for, for people to be able to come to it just on their doorstep and not have to, you know, travel mm. is um, is fantastic. Uh, and that's Haley's talk. Uh, my dad had dementia, and the fact that the any daycare he could got was the other side of Balderton you know and it was two buses mm. and a long walk down a cold road you know and it's so people easy. don't attend those uh, situations because it, it's too difficult and having something in the village is fabulous. Yeah. We have looked at having some kind of transport so that we can bring people in along the way um, because people in Newark still wanted to come to the service as well and vice versa you know because um, to have a couple of days a week is much more uh, beneficial because then you've got like an equal break across the week. Um, but obviously, if it does well, we will be able to provide another day. I'm sure um, it will. Well, I think Debbie wants to say. Yeah, I don't um, Maxine, I know I can think of a couple of my clients that are local. Um, oh, right. Okay. Maybe interested. Are you going to share some details in the chat? Yes, I will do. Yeah, yes. Yeah, thank yeah. you. I can I can send them to you, Debbie. But All right. It's, um, yeah, I think I think it's definitely going to be um, a service that's it's going to be well well needed and um, and I, and I know from speaking to you before how passionate you are about it. Oh, and yes. the personal, yeah. the personal side to it is is what's going to make families feel comfortable with leaving their loved ones and and yeah and then also it's not always the person that's going through it it's it's, yeah. it's quite often as well the family members isn't it it's not it's yeah. not just them it's the family that are affected just as much this, this is the thing because we also run we will be running our carer services again because pre-covid we had covid uh, sorry we had um carer services that we would have carers groups so it was more of a social thing as well for carers. So um, you cared for can go and be, um, you know, doing an activity while carers have a little meeting between themselves. And because sometimes it is important to find out, you know, if, if, if it's a newly diagnosed person, you know, not everybody knows what to do in the situation, you know, so yeah, it is, it is. But we will be having that back as well. And we will offer that in Collingham too. Well, thank you very much for coming on, Maxine. It's um, definitely come on again, definitely. And mm -hmm. Let us know how you're getting on and how and how it's getting on. Yes, I'd love to. Thank you. I think Hills has got a round up. Yeah, sorry. It, it, it's not, you know, it, it's not, I haven't got a question for ever, absolutely everybody, but I just wanted to say to Maxine, thank you very much because she's uh, she and her team have looked out on my father, who is, how old are you now? 97? 96? No, 95. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> 95. <laughs> right, Hills. He's 96 and um, there he, he really, he really is there. Hi, sweetie. He's, he's basically been in, um, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, he's been in lockdown, but he's also been sheltering, kind of. Um, and, um, and, and Maxine has been a huge amount of help to me with working out attendance allowance as well, mm -hmm. because it's so important to have a quality of life for people. 
uh, because sometimes we get quite bored with the interactions that we have with people and I can't provide to him what he really needs uh, and he really needs a lot of stimulation and a lot of chat <coughs> and it's it's just a lovely opportunity to do that and, and Maxine and her team have been an absolute lifesaver. She Thank also you. runs uh, people who will come and sit uh, you know there's a team of really dedicated people who will come and sit with people who are lonely um, you, you can't just park somebody in front of the television they need we need in order you know loneliness is worse than um worse than smoking it, it's more it's more adverse to our health so we need to be able to engage with other human beings and you can't engage with television you can hear stuff but you got there's not a two-way thing so um there's, there's so much that goes with it so if anyone's sitting on the sidelines stop just jump in gather up all the, these people if you know you can part fund if you're worried about the cost part fund stuff with attendance allowance Maxine can help you with that the you know we've, we've got facilities in the village that will help you with that just just do it um and also the the ability to talk to other people and go well I don't think I'm doing enough for my father for my you know uh, sister or something like that you know actually sometimes you need a spot of reassurance that actually yes you are there's a shed load of stuff that you can do so Maxine is here as a fantastic um you know future village facility just use her use her if you don't like yes, it please go somewhere else but initially <laughs> just use it because we are meant to be communal creatures so let's do something about that thank you yes. yeah we're, we're, now. this community is uh, definitely it's going to get stronger and stronger after all of this without a doubt so going on to community we've got Steph the, he's the head of community without a doubt <laughs> on it, Steph I don't know about the head of community, but uh, very enthusiastic about uh, finding ways to strengthen the community uh, and uh, from what we do. Uh, so, yeah, uh, nice nice to meet you, Maxine. Uh, we, we, Hi. And, uh, and very keen to get you engaged with uh, the uh, retirement development that we're building. And, yep, absolutely. And running an open. Uh, and, and from a personal point of view, uh, my mother-in-law is unfortunately suffering with uh, early stage dementia uh, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, we have a full-time living carer for her now in Collingham. Uh, but the, when you mentioned there about, uh, when Hills mentioned about having somebody that can call around and give a bit of relief as well, then, you know, that's definitely something that we'd be wanting to talk to you about. So... Just a quick announcement, really. Uh, so just with the, 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 the sort of things that Gusto have done over the past 12 months. So one of the things we did, uh, it's probably is nearly 12 months ago now, uh, is we uh, started the community conversation. Uh, so I think our first one was last May. So yeah, nine, uh, about yeah. 11 months ago. Uh, and really pleased to see the way that uh, Hayley and Stella and uh, Linda are uh, continuing to drive it forward, which is fantastic, excellent. Um, the, the the other thing we did last year uh, was a thing called the Collingham Community, uh, sorry, the Gusto Community Fund. Uh, so it was a bit of a uh, one of these ideas. Uh, I, I was, um, as with a, quite a few businesses, put money back into community projects or give money to charity, uh, and we thought we'd try to do it in a different way. Uh, so what we did is we gave all of our construction staff, uh, 500 pounds each, and asked them to put it back into a project within their community. And so our guys uh, live in all sorts of different places, some, some in Newark, some out in Lincoln, out in the villages, uh, and they put the 500 pounds back into a project or a, a charity uh, that was based within their physical community. And that did two things. Uh, it meant that, that those charities got the benefit of £500. But even more than that, it linked those guys with a project. It got them to look at the village, look at the uh, where they lived, and got them interested in a project that was happening in their community. Uh, so uh, because of the success of that, and if I'll, I'll, I will post something up on the chat uh, with, with a link to the website, which is called the Gusto Community Fund, uh, and you'll see the projects that we donated to uh, and, uh, and that also helped promote those projects uh, to a wider audience. 
Now, we're going to take that whole thing to the next level this year. Uh, and what we're going to do is not only are we giving all our staff another £500 to put back into projects in their communities, but we're going to give £500 to each of the people that have bought a property from us on the Collingham development. We're also doing it on uh, one of our Lincoln developments as well, uh, which means there will be many, many thousands of pounds that are gonna come back into projects in Collingham. Um, now, we, we've, this is the first uh, sort of announcement about the, this year's project or this year's Gusto Community Fund project. Uh, we haven't told the people that have bought our houses yet that they're going to have the opportunity uh, to choose a project and uh, put money into that project. Uh, so what we wanted to do, because obviously there's going to be quite a lot of money that could come back into Collingham because we want them to put money back into the local community. That doesn't necessarily mean it has to just be Collingham projects. Uh, it can be Collingham and the surrounding villages, but... Uh, very much local projects rather than uh, putting money into uh, sort of national charities. Um, so what we really, the idea of today is just to give a shout out to what we're going to do, uh, to get people to talk about it. If you've got a project, uh, it could be uh, funding uh, some uh, access to the open door. It could be the guy from Unlock Your uh, Unlock Your You who came on earlier. Uh, what, whatever the project is, uh, or it could be uh, something for Deborah to be able to um, uh, give access to your services to somebody that otherwise wouldn't be able to get access to your services. So what we're going to do, we'll have this up on the website in the next couple of weeks. Uh, I'll just put a, a, a message out now uh, to, uh, which has got our contact details on. Uh, if you've got a project or a charity that's local that you think would benefit from £500 uh, and you'd like to shout about it, then email grants at gustocommunityfund.org. Uh, and then we'll keep you posted uh, and in the next couple of weeks we'll have a, a full application process on the website. Uh, we'll be notifying uh, all our home buyers uh, that they've got that opportunity uh, to give or to choose a project that a £500 will be donated to. Uh, so hopefully that helps to continue to strengthen the community and, uh, and it's all about uh, businesses uh, putting money back into the community rather than just uh, making money from uh, the communities that we do business in. So that's me and that's all I've got to say Hayley uh, and I can see my mother with a clarinet and uh, she's no doubt going to play us out which is fantastic. Well, I, think, I, think, I think that's a great introduction Steph. I think yeah. we, can, we can now pass over to um unless uh, Stella's got anything she wants to uh, I just wanted yeah. one quick thing I just said uh, I promote the fact and I know uh, she's been on the local Facebook site that what we've been waiting for is the Beaumont House charity shop is reopening next week yeah uh, 12 I've wrote it down here 9 till 2 Monday to Friday Friday is donation day and I don't know about any of you but in the last year when all I've worn is jogging things I've got two big bags of clothes uh, that need to go somewhere uh, so I think there'll be a queue outside the door on Friday mm -hmm. uh, but I did say yeah Beaumont House shop uh, in Collingham opening at nine till two Monday to Friday and Friday's donation day so uh, that's it really before Jean plays us out I just uh, Hayley and I want to say thank you very much to everybody again uh, the next one is May the 13th uh, I'll be 60 by then because I will have had a birthday oh my goodness uh, how can that happen um, so uh, we <laughs> yeah yeah and a haircut thank goodness uh, but uh, yes so thank you everybody uh, for participating tonight uh, and uh, thanks to Steph I'm busy deciding where I'm going to put my money um, oh, yeah you've got your money to decide yeah so. yeah bribes will be taken so uh, that's fine uh, and uh, it's a brilliant brilliant idea so uh, thanks again to everybody uh, I'm sure Haley and uh, will join me in saying thank you
Uh, and over to Jean to play us out. Jean, you need to unmute, Jean. Oh, there we go. What's old women made of? Made of? Reels and peels and old spinning wheels. That's what old women are made of. What's old men made of? Made of? Whiskey and brandy and sugar and candy. And that's what old men are made of. <laughs> What's young women made of, made of? Rings and jings and all fine, fine things. And that's what old women, young women, do make, make of themselves. What? What's little babies made of, made of? Sugar and scrums and all sweet yums, and that's what little babies are made of. Thanks, Jean. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. I'll see you in a month. Good night. Good night.